Welcome back to Zone for Geeks. My name is Casey and today we're going to be configuring an extreme switch. So specifically what we're going to be doing is creating some VLANs and then we're going to let our switch act as our DHCP server, but we're also going to connect an external DHCP server. So by the time it's all said and done with, we're going to have four VLANs using four computers connecting to four different subnets and two DHCP servers, our switch and our external server. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I'm using GNS3 and I've already imported our extreme appliance. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag this over and I'm going to go ahead and connect our DCP server to our switch. And we're just going to add this on port 12. And now I'm going to start the switch. I'm going to connect to the console and I've increased the size of this just a little bit. So hopefully it is easier to read. And this will take just a few minutes to boot up. Okay, if you are connecting to a switch for the first time, then the default password is, or username and password will be admin with no password. Now I'm just gonna hit enter to go ahead and accept all of these defaults. We can change them later if we want, but that is beyond the scope of this video. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to go ahead and create two VLANs and these VLANs are going to be using the extreme switch as the DACP server. So in order to do that, we're just going to do create VLAN. We're going to give it a name. So I'm going to call this cells and we're going to give it a tag and this is just going to be VLAN 10. And I want to go ahead and create the next one. So create VLAN and we will call this one marketing and we'll give it a tag of 20. And so now we've created our two VLANs, but we do need to go ahead and configure them. So let's do configure VLAN cells and I want to give it an IP address. So I'm going to do IP address and the IP address that I'm going to use is 192.168.10.1. Uh, we need to give it a net mask, a subnet mask. Now we can either use CIDR notation, so slash 24, or we can just write it out. So 255.255.0. And let's go ahead and do that for our marketing. So configure VLAN marketing and then IP address. And this one is going to be dot 20 and I will use CIDR notation for that. And so now we have created our two VLANs. So next thing that we need to do is we want to go ahead and add um, the VLANs to our ports. So let's go to configure VLAN and we'll do sales again. And then we're going to add ports. Even though we're going to be only using one port, we still need to add the S to the end of ports. And then we're going to say VLAN 10 is going to be port 1. Uh, default, if we leave it like this, that port will be untagged. So if I hit enter. And then let's do that for our marketing. So configure VLAN marketing, add ports 2. And then I can also spell out untagged if that's how I want to uh, move forward. So now we have a sign. Let's go ahead and take a look at our VLAN. So we do show VLANs, uh, show VLAN. And here we can see we've got our marketing VLAN along with our IP address and our sales VLAN along with that IP address as well. We can also do uh, drill down to a specific VLAN. So if we want to do show VLAN marketing. And here we get some information. We can see that uh, port two is set up as untagged. And if we had a tagged VLAN, it would also be here. Um, and of course, any other ports that we had as well. So now that we've got our VLANs configured, uh, we need to go ahead and enable DACP. So we're going to do enable DACP ports one. And then we're going to set this for, this is going to be our sales VLAN. And then we're going to do the same thing, DACP ports to VLAN marketing. Okay, so now we need to uh, configure our address scopes, so our, our ranges. So we're going to do configure VLAN, and then we're going to do sales first. So this is going to be DACP dash address and you can just hit tab to autofill or autocomplete I should say and now we need to give it our ranges so I'm going to do 192.168.10.100 
and then 192.168.10 and we'll just do to 110 and now we need to do the same thing for our marketing so configure VLAN marketing PACP and then 192.168.20.100.192.168.20.110. All right, so now the only thing we have left to do is we need to specify our default gateway. So let's go ahead and go to configure VLAN cells, and then we're going to use DHCP options and default gateway and then our default gateway is going to be the IP address for our VLAN that we created earlier so 192.168.10.1 and then we'll do the same thing for marketing and options and then default gateway Okay, so now we have completely configured our um, DHCP server on our switch. Let's go ahead and test it out. So we're going to minimize this. I'm going to just grab a couple of virtual computers here. And we're going to get them connected. So we'll do port 1 for PC1 and then port 2 or PC2. So this is so PC1 will be our cells, PC2 will be our marketing. So we'll start both of them and we're going to go in here to the console and uh, assign it a DHCP address or uh, set it up for DHCP. So to do that we're just going to do IP DHCP. Hit enter. And this should give us a 10 dot something, 10 dot 100, most likely. So there we go, 192.168.10.100 with a 10 dot 1 as the gateway. And if we go ahead and do the same thing with PC2, this should give us a 30 dot 100. IP. or 20.100, I'm sorry, we haven't gotten that far yet. Uh, so there you go, so we have our switch acting as our uh, DACP server, and we have two computers that have gotten DACP addresses from our .10 and .20 VLANs. So that's all fine and well, but larger organizations will most likely have their own external DACP server. So let's go ahead and get that configured. So we're going to minimize this. Now I want to point out that I have already configured the DACP server. This is a Linux um, virtual machine. So there's nothing to do on this end. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pull up our extreme switch. And we're going to create two more VLANs. I'm going to do VLANs 40 and 50 uh, just for simplicity because I named the uh, or I gave the IP address for our DACP server at dot 50. So let's do uh, we're going to create VLAN and then we're just going to call this one accounting tag 40. I'm going to set this on port 4 just to simplify it since it is on VLAN 40 and this is going to be untagged. Okay, so now our DHCP server is connected to port 12. So we need to be able to pass traffic from um, VLAN 40 and VLAN 50 across the same port. 
port. So in order to do that on other switches, you would set it as a trunk port. Um, in this case, we're actually going to be tagging one of our VLANs. So let's do configure VLAN 40 and then add ports 12. And I'm going to set this as our tag to VLAN. And then if we do configure VLAN 50, add ports 12, and this is going to be untagged. So now we will have both VLANs 40 and 50 passing through port 12. And as soon as this gets done uh, setting up, I will actually show you uh, this port. So show port 12. And so here we can see, uh, actually let's do this. So we'll uh, escape out of that. Uh, VLAN port 12. There we go. So here we can see that we've got the accounting on port 12, the server on port 12, uh, and we have our IP addresses so that we know exactly what is actually passing through there. Okay, so we have created our VLANs. And the next thing, so on the extreme switch, when we want to pass traffic to an external DHCP server, uh, we need to tell it where that server is located. And for extreme, that is called the boot P relay. So we're going to do um, configure boots P relay. And we're going to give it the IP address of our DHCP server. In this case, it's 192.168.50.2. And then our virtual route, we only have one, and that's going to be default. And so now we have set up our uh, boot P relay, and we have told our switch where to find the DACP server. Next, we need to actually enable the uh, boot P relay uh, for the VLANs that we want to use. So while we have four VLANs, only VLANs 40 and 50 are going to be connecting to our external um, IP or external DP, DHCP server. So let's do enable boots P relay VLAN accounting and then enable boot P relay VLAN server. And the last thing that we need to do in order to get this to work is we need to enable IP forwarding because VLANs 40 and 50 need to be able to communicate with each other so that the traffic can be passed back and forth. Uh, we need to actually allow that inter VLAN communication. So in order to do that, we're going to do enable IP forwarding VLAN accounting and then enable IP forwarding VLAN server. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. Not necessary, but always a good practice. And now we should be able to get an IP address from our uh, DACP server on dot 40 and dot 50. So let's go ahead and create two more virtual PCs. And we will go ahead and connect them. So I'm going to connect this to port four and then this one will be connected to port five. I believe is how we set that up. And let's go start and start. Okay, so now you can see we got an IP address of 40.100 with a gateway of 40.1. And if we go to PC4, we should get something on the range of 50.100. So we'll do IP, DCP. And there you have it. So now we have four different computers getting four different subnet IP addresses from two different DHCP servers. Now it should go without saying that all of this is fine with the exception of the two DHCP servers. Um, this should only be one. It's okay to have a backup, but the primary, you should not have um, computers or systems getting IP addresses from two different 
um, DHCP servers, especially if they're localized within the same building or the same LAN. Um, make sure that you, you have just one, either the switch or an external DHCP server. So if you like this video, go ahead and leave me a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to see how I set up GNS3 to be able to use the Extreme system and how I was able to um, set up this lab for you guys, just uh, send me a, a message, drop a comment below. And uh, if enough people want it, then I will go ahead and make a video for that. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.